Hi there! Welcome to Science Made Simple by Ms. Flans. For today's standard, 6E2B.1, I can analyze and interpret data from weather conditions, including wind speed and direction, air temperature, humidity, cloud types and air pressure, weather maps, satellites, and radar to predict local weather patterns and conditions. So this is basically the entire standard. So we wanted to deconstruct that to show you our focus of study today. And for that, our I can statement, I can analyze and interpret data from weather instruments. So this is our focus of study. We're going to be looking at what are weather instruments and how they help our meteorologists. These are scientists who specialize, uh, who specialize in the study of weather. And they use that so that they can predict local weather patterns and conditions. For our cross-cutting concept, we have patterns, we have cause and effect. So, did you know that meteorologists or weather scientists use many different instruments to gather data about the weather? So, these instruments collect data on temperature, precipitation, wind, air pressure, and more. These weather instruments actually help them make weather predictions because they need to make weather predictions so they can inform the public ahead of time if there are weather disturbances along our way. So what are these weather instruments? These are thermometer, rain gauge, wind vane, anemometer, and barometer, among others. So let's study first thermometer. A thermometer tells us how hot or cold the air is. This is how meteorologist measures temperature. So as an additional knowledge, when you say freezing and boiling, so these are the process involved in the water cycle. When you have liquid changing to solid, we call it freezing. And if you have liquid, Changing to gas, we call it boiling. So now there are certain temperature where water can reach the freezing point and the boiling point. So Fahrenheit, the water needs to go to 32 degree Fahrenheit so it will freeze. And 212 degree Fahrenheit for it to boil. If you use the Celsius, as your unit for temperature, then you'll have zero degrees Celsius as the freezing point of water and 100 degrees Celsius as the boiling point of water. So there are different kinds of thermometers, but the most common has a liquid inside the thin glass tube. The liquid expands when it gets warmer and con contracts when it gets cooler. As it expands and contracts, it moves up and down the tube, which in turn shows the temperature of the air. So in this case, we have here, we have here now a simple thermometer. So you'll notice that the red now rises, so that means the air becomes warmer. And you look at also the calibration of our thermometer in here. This is zero. This is the freezing point of water in Celsius. So this is in Celsius here, and this is in Fahrenheit here. So numbers below zero are already negative. So it is below freezing point. Numbers above zero is above freezing point so as it goes up as the numbers goes up the temperature also becomes warmer or rising so in this case if you are asked to read the temperature of the air so you will look at the top most of this red and then 
try to see if what will be the reading. So in this case, if this is 20 and 30 here, that means each line corresponds to 2. So this is 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So if I'm going to read this, this is our reading now is 24 degrees Celsius. If I use the Celsius as the unit for temperature. On the left side, it is in Fahrenheit. So you will notice also that each line corresponds to one unit. Because it is 60, 60, oh no, it's two, it's, it's still two. So you have 60, so you notice that there's a big or a, a very a visible line in here. So this is in between 60 and 80, so this is 70. So that means each tiny line here is equivalent to 2. So we can have 60, 62, 64, 68, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76. So probably here, if I'm not mistaken, our temperature in degree Fahrenheit is 76 degree Fahrenheit. So that's how you're gonna read your thermometer. All right. So moving moving on to the next, we have precipitation. So you know that precipitation in the water cycle, this refers to the solid or liquid water falling down from the surf, from the air to the surface of the earth. So how can you measure precipitation? It can be measured with a rain gauge or that's for rain and ruler for snow. So this can measure the amount of rainfall. That's a rain gauge. So this tool is a can or tube with an opening at the top. So like this one. A tube in here with an opening on the top. The rain falls into the rain gauge. And the scale on the side measures how much rain has collected in it. And with the, with the collection of rain in here, you'll be able to say if the rain was heavy or not based on the amount of water that is collected in the rain gauge. The ruler, on the other hand, is a good tool to measure snow. So the scientists just merely stick the ruler straight down into the snow and they are able to see how many inches of snow has fallen. So that is for measuring precipitation. There are also weather tools that are used to describe the two properties of wind. One of that is a weather vane, or we call it wind vane. This tells the direction from which the wind comes. You can sometimes see weather vanes on the roof of houses or barns. So the weather vane or the wind vane spins freely in the wind the front of the weather vane points in the direction of the wind. So I want you to look closely to this illustration or picture in here. This is a weather vane or a wind vane. You notice that there are letters S for South, E for East, N for North, and W for West in here. So when there is a wind now, this one, this upper part with an arrow will spin around and uh, this side of the arrow, this is pointing towards where the wind is coming. In this case, if you look at this, it is in between south and west. So we can say that the wind is blowing from southwest because the arrow is pointing on that direction. On the other hand here, we call this as a wind sock. It will also tell you where the wind is coming from because this wind sock will be moving away from that direction of the origin of the wind. The second, or no, the third, well, not the third, but we are now on the fourth, okay? So the fourth weather instrument that I'm showing to you right now is 
a anemometer. This tells how fast the wind blows. So these tools have several arms that stick out and each have a cup at its end. So wind blows into the cup and spins this anemometer. So the tool measures the force of the wind pushing against it. So the stronger the wind, the faster this one will spin, okay? So that is used now to measure how fast the wind blows. So, we have here now another weather instrument and we call this as something that is used to measure air pressure. When you say air pressure, that is the pressure or column on air above certain local location exerts of Earth's surface. That is the amount of air that is above a certain location and that is the pressure exerted by the Earth's surface. So this is an important tool in weather prediction. It tells meteorologists if the weather will be fair or stormy. So when there is a low air pressure, we can say that it is a stormy weather. When there's a high air pressure, we can say that it's a fair weather. So what is that instrument that is used to measure air pressure? We call it barometer. So as I've mentioned earlier, rising means sunny and dry conditions. Falling means stormy and wet conditions. So look closely on this barometer. So you will see there are numbers on the sides starting from 960. 970 moving towards 1070. So if you have this hand of this barometer pointing downwards here to the left, so this means that air pressure is falling. In this case, you will expect that there will be a stormy and wet condition of the weather. But if this hand of the barometer will move towards the right or it, or it will be rising, so that means we will have a sunny and dry weather. Sunny means there's a sun, dry means there will be no rain. So this is barometer. This is used to measure air pressure. And what would be the, the result of this? Reading from a barometer will help scientists or meteorologists predict if we will have a sunny and dry condition or a stormy and wet condition. So if it's the reading is falling, so that means we have stormy and wet weather condition. But if it moves towards the right, then we will have a sunny and dry conditions. Hygrometer. Hygrometer is a tool used to measure humidity. So what is humidity? That is the amount of moisture in the air. So with this information now, meteorologists will be able to predict if there is a rain or snow that is coming. Weather balloon. This is a tool used to collect high altitude forecast data. High because this is floating up above to the upper troposphere. So what is its importance? This records temperature, humidity, and air pressure high into the atmosphere, informing our meteorologists of potential and future storms. The good thing about this is it can move higher to the upper troposphere. That's why they can get more information in terms of temperature, humidity, and air pressure. We have the Doppler radar. This is a tool used to monitor the movement of precipitation. So this radar emits radio waves in a given direction. So once that radio waves reach that area there where there is rain, it will reflect back information. 
So that is great for tracking storms locations because you will know exactly where the storm is because of the information or waves that is required.